The first lecture in Art 1200 InDesign software is all about printing, packaging, and exporting. And although the textbook is optional or recommended at this point in time, um, it does sync up to chapters 19 and 20, which you may think to yourself, well, why would we do 19 and 20 in the textbook before we did chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, etc.? Um, that is because to me the most important part of InDesign is its ability to properly help you organize or remain organized and to prepare your artwork for output. And in order to output it, you need to organize it and create what's called a package and send that package to whoever is going to produce whatever you were creating. And so we're going to start with something that's probably going to feel a little bit uncomfortable and difficult because it's very foreign if you've never used InDesign before. Um, but having a solid foundation in how to properly save, pre-flight, package, print, export, etc. your project will allow you to be more successful with the rest of the projects. And so you'll notice that the first project in Art 1200 is not a project where you create any artwork at all. You're going to take an existing file or booklet file and you're going to learn how to properly do those things that I just mentioned. So we're going to start with chapters 19 and 20, with chapter 19 being printing. Our objectives for night, chapter 19 are to be able to open a supply project and to save a project, uh, specifically an InDesign project. And really what I want you to do is to be able to look at the files that are given to you and decide, has the person who gave me these files provided me with a proper InDesign project or have they just given me a file? And there are, very certain, there are certain things that you should look for that would indicate whether or not the product has been properly packaged or if it's just a, a grouping of files that someone is giving you. If someone just gives you a grouping of files, especially with InDesign, um, you, can't, you can't fully work with those files because there might be some things that are missing. One of the first things we'll do when we open a project is we'll pre-flight that project uh, we will fix any errors by relinking missing or modified graphics, so we'll spend a lot of time in this lecture practicing that. Then we'll learn how to package the project, which you'll learn what that means. Then we'll talk about printing. You can scale and tile, etc. We'll talk specifically about printer's marks and booklet printing. We'll also talk about color separations, because you're required to create color separations for all the pro uh, all the projects in my class, but also if you're a graphic design student or you plan to take Art 1230 type and layout or Art 2230 advanced type and layout or package design, advertising design, um, any of those advanced design classes, you'll be required to create color separations for those projects as well. So let's get started. The first thing that you have to do is you have to download files for project one and you have to open those files. And what I want you to do is I want you to get into the habit of only working with packaged InDesign files. So, so there, there's a way to work without the package, but a package in InDesign is all of the files that you would need to recreate a project for someone. And a lot of the times with InDesign, we talk about creating something for a printed output. And so in order to print it, you need to have the images and the typefaces and the file and all the text, etc. And InDesign uh, inherently does not embed those things into the document that you create in InDesign. What it does is it links those to where they should be in your document. The reason that this happens is because InDesign wants to have a very low file size so that if you're working on a 400 page book in InDesign, it doesn't operate slow. If you flip from page to page or you scroll up and down, there should be no delay in how fast you can switch from one page to another. Whereas if you were in, let's say, Photoshop and you had a giant poster that's 24 by 36 inches and you had it set to 300 DPI resolution, um, it could take a very long time to use a paintbrush to paint across the screen. There could be a delay. Or if you scroll up and down, you might have to wait a few seconds before it actually scrolls. So the goal when someone gives you an InDesign project is that they're not just giving you an InDesign file, which would be that INDD file that's listed on the screen here. What they're doing is they're giving you a properly packaged InDesign project. And minimally, the package should include a documents fonts folder, a links folder, a text file, and an InDesign file. In addition to that, you might also have a .idml file, since those are already included, starting with CS6. Now, the example that's on the screen here is old, so you can see that the InDesign file that says ID and it's pink, it's actually a CS 5.5. I left that in the screenshot here on purpose because I want to emphasize that InDesign files 
are different depending on what version of the program you're using. So if you're using CS4 or CS5 or 5.5 or 6 or Creative Cloud or even Creative Cloud 2016 versus Creative Cloud 2017, um, the InDesign file you receive, they're not cross compatible. Just because I gave you a CS 5.5 document does not mean that I can open your CS uh, 2017 document. It's important to keep that in mind. So the things that you're looking for are a documents fonts folder and you can see in the little um, blown up version here that it will include any of the fonts you're using in your document and what you should look for if you're the person who created this package folder is if I'm using 12 different typefaces or fonts, are they included in this folder? Right now in the sample, I can see that I just have one and then there's like a text file in there. If I know that I'm only using one typeface and I see 12, that's also another issue and you have to go back and check your file because you only want to give the person who's recreating this project for you the information they need. You don't want to give them 45 fonts if you're only using one because their first reaction will be, well, where are you using those other 44 fonts? Links equal graphics or pictures, and so if you have any pictures in your document, um, they will be in the links folder, and you can see that whatever the package folder that um, I have screenshotted here, it has seven files inside the links folder. Those are pictures that are used in the document. The text file is a set of instructions that is compiled automatically from your settings in InDesign, but can also be customized when you're packaging your project and it's a set of instructions and so you should open that and you should read the file when someone gives it to you because there might be specific notes but there's also technical setups and things that, that whoever created the file is telling you that they want certain technical setup things to happen when you create or you output their project. And then the last thing you're looking for is a .indd, go back here, INDD InDesign file and again it is different between CS 4, 5, 5.5, 6, Creative Cloud, etc. So keep that in mind.